Here's how to add a client in LeashTime. After logging into LeashTime, we will add a client named Wendy Apple, who lives on Smith Street. Before you add a client, it's a good idea to make sure that the client has not already been added to LeashTime. A quick way to make sure Wendy Apple is not an active client is to type part of her name in the search box. Here we see that there is a client named Barney Apple. Maybe they share a residence. Let's see. We're taken to Barney's Services tab, but we can check his address quickly by clicking the Address tab. No, it looks like a different customer. Well, maybe Wendy Apple was a client in the past, but is no longer active. If we think this might be so, we can go to the Client list under the Clients menu. This shows us our active clients by default, but we can easily view inactive clients by clicking the Show Inactive Clients button. She's not here so we can add her as a new client with the Add Client button. The only mandatory fields when adding a client are first and last name, but we'll cover a few more fields after we enter those. It pays to get the capitalization right now because LeashTime won't correct it for you. By the way, LeashTime does try to warn you if it thinks you may be entering a duplicate client. This little green note here shows you similar names when you hover over it. Barney Apple appears in this case. Next, we'll enter Wendy's email address. This is a necessary field, of course, if you want to email her schedules or questions. And a phone number is important as well. If Wendy is only a prospect at this stage, check the prospect box. Otherwise, we can leave it blank. There are many other fields that we could fill in, but uh, here in the Basic Info tab, but we'll focus on three. The Notes box is where you would enter notes about the client, which will be printed out on visit sheets. But the Office Notes box is where you would enter notes that you don't want the client to see under any circumstances. If you want Wendy to log into Leash Time, she will need a system login. We click the Set Client Login button, and we are warned that Wendy's information needs to be saved first. We click OK. The screen changes and we see Wendy's name at the top of the window. So we click on Set Client Login again. In the System Login Editor, we first pick a username. We can make up a name or we can choose from a list of suggestions that LeashTime has determined to be available. If we want to be sure that the name is available, we can click the Check Username Availability button. For the password, you have three options. You can leave the password blank, and then Wendy will have to le use LeashTime's forgotten password feature on the login page before she can log in. Or you can enter a password for her, typing it in twice to make sure that you got it right. Or you can enter a temporary password for her that she can use to log in the first time, at which time she'll be required to set her permanent secret password. Make sure the active box is checked. When you look, need to block Wendy's access to leash time, uncheck this box and she won't be able to log in. When you mark her as an inactive client in the Basic Info tab, she will also cease to have access to leash time. We click the Save New Login button, and now Wendy has a leash time login. Next, we'll enter Wendy's address. We click on the Address tab. Uh, where we can enter a home address and optionally a separate mailing address. LeashTime prompts you for the zip code first because it can fill in the city and state automatically when you do. So that just leaves entering the street address. We go to the Pets tab to enter information about Wendy's dogs, Mac and Granny. First we indicate whether or not Wendy authorizes emergency medical care for her pets. Then we enter her pets. Mac is a male Scotty, colored black. To add a photo of Mac, we browse for it and select it. Leash time reminds us the photo will be updated when we save changes. Next, we click Add Another Pet to add Granny, a yellow lab.
and we can add a photo of her too. Why don't we save changes at this point to upload the photos? The Home Info tab describes Wendy's home and lets you enter Wendy's key into leash time. Let's say we have two copies of the key, one of which is in the Alexandria office key safe, while the other has been given to Tony B. Leash Time now knows about the keys and will track their movements from this point on. Other home info fields include directions and alarm info. The emergency tab lets you specify two people to contact in cases of urgent need. Leash Time calls one the emergency contact and the other a trusted neighbor. The only other tab that is important when you are at first adding a client to Leash Time is the billing tab. Here you can specify how Wendy prefers to be invoiced and set up custom service prices for her. Let's say she lives outside your usual service area, so she agrees to pay an extra $2 for each dog walk. We could enter $25 for that service. Or maybe she lets you use the hot tub when you sit with her dogs overnight, so you offer her a special price of $70 for the overnight two pets service. Finally. We can enter a credit card for Wendy by clicking the Enter Credit Card Info button. Whenever you try to do anything involving credit cards in Leash Time, Leash Time will ask you to enter your password again as a security measure unless the last time you performed a credit card operation was less than 15 minutes ago. We enter the password and now we can enter Wendy's credit card. If we enter a valid number, Leash Time identifies the credit card company for you. We click OK here. We supply an expiration date and optionally a credit card verification number. And we make sure AutoPay authorized is checked if Wendy has agreed to this. Then we fill in the rest of the card information or use Wendy's client information if applicable and click the Save button to create the credit card. Finally, we save our changes to Wendy's profile and we are ready to set up her pet sitting schedule or add another new client. Thanks for using Leash Time.